So I am making uh, the dog food for our two boxers. We feed them, my wife and I feed them uh, the biologically appropriate raw food diet. So once a month we, we get a bunch of uh, meat from the butcher and a bunch of vegetables and we juice down the vegetables and mix it all up and we're like, you know, those weirdos from uh, Beth and Show who, who <laughs> feed the dog better than we actually feed ourselves. I kind of thought, you know, we started the Loved Ones as this like loud, raucous punk band, and I think that's what we do best. Um, our shows are, are good at their wildest and stuff, and I don't know that these songs are going to be appropriate to make the next Loved Ones record. So. We sort of were in limbo anyway, and, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna see this through and write this batch of songs, and they came really quickly, and uh, I played them for my buddy Pete, who ended up producing the record, and he was like, you really need to make this into a record, and let's do this. So I started calling friends, and uh, called my sister Missy, and asked if she would play piano on it, because uh, she had played on tour with the loved ones a bunch, and, um, and she was like, yeah, sure, my friend Brendan lives right around the corner, and I was going to be home a bunch. He said, yeah, man, I, I would love to play. Um, and so started to compile this, like, this band that we ended up calling the Empty Bottles Band, because uh, we were busy with lots of wine and whiskey when we were making the songs. Just, like, you know, hanging out in my house and stuff. And Pete and I just started, you know, putting the record together and spending lots of time. I initially just wanted to blow it out in a weekend. Just record it and whatever we had, that would be the album. But um, but Pete was like, slow down, you know, don't rush this. These are good songs. We really need to make this a, a record that, you know, you're going to be proud of in a year and not be like, you know, we should have spent more time. One of the things when we made the record, we all jammed down into... Brian McTernan's studio, we had about four or five days there, and, and he set us up and got everything mic'd, and we were just gonna get done as much as we could, much as much of the tracks, and then we finished it up in Asbury Park. But um, we ended up, for some reason, I had the idea to bring that movie, um, the Tom Petty documentary, uh, Running Down a Dream, um, which is a long, it's a long movie. Um, and we had that on constant repeat upstairs in the common area where you know we all could, could kind of like you know cook food and hang out and drink beers and stuff so that was just running on repeat the entire time and and uh, I think it had an effect on the way we played and there were different points where we were like ah oh, you know we were pressed for time so there were different points where we, you know Michael or or, um, or Brendan would be like well you know what do I play here what's the right thing to do and we kept going back to like what would Tom Petty do in, in, in this uh, if he was faced with the same song or whatever. Then I'm doing an East Coast tour of, uh, of the States um, with Ian Graham from Cheap Girls and Mikey Erg from the Ergs. We're going to get into a car and do, you know, sort of like an evening of music together, playing on each other's songs and you know, doing whatever solo material they have, and then also some, maybe some Erg songs and loved one songs and whatever, you know. It'll just be a, uh, I mean, we're all good friends and fans of each other's bands, so we're gonna do that in, um, in April. And then, um, I think the Revival Tour in Canada, Chuck Reagan's Revival Tour, we're gonna do that up in Canada in May or June. And, um, and then who knows what, I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that keeps coming.
You went one long there, didn't you? Maybe, yeah. I think. Are you videotaping? <laughs> oh, I thought you were done! <laughs>